Hello, viewers. We are back again to the program. Uh, let's continue the discussion. Uh, Sashi, we were discussing about your books, and uh, I asked you during the break that uh, uh, if all of your uh, writings were in the uh, form of satire. Could you clarify that? Well, no, fine. The thing is that uh, the first novel, the great Indian novel, was very much a satire. And the second one, the show business, uh, continued in the kind of tradition where I used Bollywood cinema mm -hmm. as a metaphor for exploring the Indian condition, and it had film stories, lyrics, etc., along, uh, along with the plot of the novel. But my third novel, Riot, is actually a very serious novel. It's the one novel that has been published in a Bangladesh edition by Daily Star. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's, uh, it's done well here because mm -hmm. it, it, is, it, it touches a lot of issues and themes Which that is, matter yeah. to everybody uh, right. across the subcontinent, including here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and my collection, The Five Dollar Smile, which is my only other work of fiction, is in fact um, just short stories, um, most of which are fairly straight, one or two humorous, but mainly straight. Who chooses the titles? The titles, I choose, I choose them <laughs> myself. I never yeah. let anybody have a say on the titles. Okay. Uh, I'm very proud of some of them because I know India from midnight to the millennium. Mm -hmm. and my publishers, it was in America at that time, mm -hmm. didn't like the title and they wanted something much more boring. And I said, I insisted. <laughs> and my vindication came when President Clinton used that title yes, in yes. his speech. Yes. I said, see, it struck a chord. That's right. That's um, right. Similarly, the elephant, the tiger and the cell phone. Right. Not everyone thought that was a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they would have thought, what a strange title. True. But I thought that strangeness would capture people's attention. Right. Whereas with Riot, I chose a very simple one word. But Serious. Blunt, brutal title. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some ways, that's what the, the novel uh, deserved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. I was going through your uh, brief uh, resume, <laughs> and I found out that, um, and which I mentioned, that in everything that you did, you received some kind of a reward. For instance, the Commonwealth Prize for Writing, NDTV Award for Politics, Priyadarshini Award for Excellence in Diplomacy, and it seems uh, quite a few identities you are having. Amongst all that, which one do you think is deserving, all are deserving, <laughs> or you like uh, you know, Fahim, they all re re represent the same person. They're all aspects of who I am as a human being. Right. See, I react to the world I see around me right. uh, through both action and reflection. Right. The action is manifested in my work, whether it's United Nations work, whether it's um, uh, government and politics and relating to my constituency, whether it's human resource development or external affairs, whatever opportunities I have. And that action has always been an important part of my uh, makeup, and, and I'm very happy that it's been recognized by mm -hmm. some. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the writing is indispensable to me. It is, it is uh, I, I look at the world and there are some things I can do something about, there are some things I can think about, analyze, observe, and recommend. And my whole argument tends to be that um, the two are facets of the same personality. The writing I can't avoid. I've always uh, taken as my motto George Bernard Shaw's famous line mm -hmm. that I write for the same reason a cow gives milk. <laughs> you see, it's inside you, it's got to come out, and you'd really be in pain if wow. it didn't. Wow, well, that's a... And that's to a, my mind, um, uh, I, 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 it's a essential, very I cannot not put. write. Again, another area which, uh, you know, I, you have covered almost all the, so many hats you're wearing. What made you jump into politics? You were one of the contenders. A lot of people said you might uh, even become Secretary General. I mean, everyone is saying that he's the man, you know. And then suddenly I hear one fine morning that you have become a minister in India. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I did contest the post of Secretary General. I came a close second to Mr. Ban Ki-moon. Okay. There were seven contenders. There was a, a president of a country. There were a couple of deputy prime ministers, a foreign minister, yes, to yes. a prince. Yes. And I came second, so I, have, I can be proud of my performance. Sure, but sure. As Groucho Marx used to say, no cigar. <laughs> no know, I, cigar. Could, I could not, I could not uh, take, the, take the top job. Uh -huh. And though Mr. Ban Ki-moon was gracious enough to invite me to remain and serve, right. I felt that my continuing after having contested against him right. would be in bad taste. It would just right. mean that anything I said or did would be liable would to be misinterpretation, yeah. to yeah. be casting a shadow over him. Mm -hmm. So I left. Mm -hmm. And I took about a year to decide what to do with myself. During that time, I spoke were getting handsome fees for my speeches. Um, I was writing. I, I did the Elephant Tiger cell phone book at that time. Uh, and I was also able to, um, to do a little bit of business consulting, but I had no real talent for the mm -hmm. business world. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, I never have been a money-minded person, so okay. that didn't work. But at the end of the day, what I found when I was offered the prospect of contesting the elections in the following uh, general elections, 2009, mm -hmm. was that my heart leapt at the prospect. I didn't even, I couldn't prevent my tongue from saying yes as soon as the question was asked to me. Okay. And that yes um, is what led to it because, you know, frankly, uh, for me as, a, as an individual, uh, it was not by any means uh, going to be a, 
uh, an easy choice. I don't True. come from a political family. Right. I had no particular political pedigree or political background. Mm -hmm. I was running on my reputation. Mm -hmm. And one knows that the kind of reputation you have uh, amongst readers or amongst newspaper uh, readers does not necessarily extend to the masses. Mm -hmm. So how do you persuade the masses that you can represent their interests True. Uh, in, in parliament? Um, and that to uh, my opponents, um, it was a seat uh, held by the Communist Party. Yes, the two previous yes, I, elections I, I know, I know. had been won by the Communists. Yeah. They went around saying, this fellow is not like us. He's going to be going around in suit and tie uh -huh. like Fahim <laughs> and sitting in air-conditioned <laughs> comfort. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, he won't uh, be able to speak for us, uh, speak like us, relate right. to us, etc. So I had to really disprove that message mm -hmm. by going out in the hottest month of the year, mm -hmm. dressed in Kerala clothes, speaking Malayalam, uh, engaging with ordinary voters, and I'm very pleased to say it worked, and I won by a, a resounding majority. Your, your the second election, uh, sorry, Tiruvananthapuram, yeah. which is the old Trivandrum, Trivandrum. the capital of Kerala. Okay. I sometimes joke that my problem is I'm an MP in Delhi, uh -huh. and I represent a place which is as far as you can fly from Delhi <laughs> without falling into the water. True. It's a southernmost airport a absolutely. on the Indian mainland. Absolutely, yep. You know, yep. it's uh, literally uh, 20 uh -huh. minutes flying time from Sri Lanka. So you have to plan well ahead uh, <laughs> to visit your constituency. Well, I, I usually... Usually the pattern is that during Parliament, weekends, yeah. uh, weekdays I'm in Delhi, weekends I fly there. But yeah. it's punishing because it's yeah. not a short flight. Right. Uh, right. I have to go, um, I leave uh, uh, on Friday afternoon, I mm -hmm. miss the Friday afternoon session usually, uh, to get there at night on Friday. Mm -hmm. Then I have full appointment Saturday and Sunday. And then I have to wake up at 4 a.m. to catch a 6 a.m. flight on Monday morning to be in Parliament in time. This is your uh, second term in the... Uh, second term. Second term. And you plan to... Uh, go on. Um, well, the voters have given, given me almost five uh -huh. years left. I mean, th four and three, four and a half years. Right. So um, I have to serve them with the best of my ability. Now, you are the chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on External Affairs. Now, let me put it this way. You have been in, the, in uh, you know, Congress has been in power. You have seen how your foreign policy work. Now, being as a chairman, uh, how do you see, as you said, that six months of Modi uh, government you are writing and it should come out? Do you deal with the external side also? As very much. Let me say that uh, in our country, it's, I think, something we can be very proud of, that the chairmanship of the External Affairs Committee has traditionally been with the opposition. In mm -hmm. fact, when um, uh, the Congress Party was in power, Mr. Vajpay, mm -hmm. who later became Prime Minister, chaired this committee. Mr. Gujral, also yes, Prime Minister, Gujar, chaired right. this committee. So it's a committee which has um, uh, traditionally been held by the opposition. In fact, it has never been taken it's over by the It becomes healthier party. also. Because, you see, we have always mm -hmm. taken the view mm -hmm. that our political differences stop at the border. They stop right. at the water's edge. Right. When it comes to foreign policy, there is no Congress foreign policy and BJP foreign it's policy. Indians. There is Indian foreign policy. Right. Now, there may be differences of opinion on the execution, mm -hmm. on details, mm -hmm. and on how exactly we should proceed. And we as an opposition party will always reserve the right mm -hmm. to tell the government so when we disagree with them. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, for example, on an issue like um, Indo-Bangladesh relations, I don't see any difference between the policy pursued by my government and the policy pursued by the new government. We both it, understand it, it, how important it, it, Bangladesh it, it, is. To here, us. Is that so? Because what I had seen on certain issues, um, uh, Congress, uh, whenever they proposed something, uh, BJP went uh, totally against it. And now that BJP is in power and you are in the opposition, how, as you said, that beyond borders, it's a different story. It's I think so because, I mean, the BJP did not draw that distinction. I'm talking about a Congress point of view. Okay. The BJP did oppose a number of things yes. for the sake of opposing. And I find that very unconstructive for an opposition party to do. One of the most uh, shameful uh, revelations from WikiLeaks yes. was when it turned out that the same BJP leaders uh -huh. who were attacking the Indo-US nuclear deal mm -hmm. to the point of bringing Mm -hmm. a vote of confidence against Mr. Manmohan Singh in Parliament. Uh, these leaders were similar at the same time assuring American envoys in private that they were in favor, but they were opposing because they had to oppose. Now, that kind of politics does not do the country any good service. Mm -hmm. And I personally will be very disappointed if my party does that. Mm -hmm. um, for example, on the Indo-Bangladesh land boundary agreement, mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, negotiated mm -hmm. this. We had introduced it with pride. And uh, to our shock, the BJP opposed it in Parliament. Mm -hmm. Now that they are in power and they know it is in the national interest, mm -hmm. they themselves are supporting it. Uh, to my mind, uh, we should not now say that because uh, we are in opposition, we have to oppose. On the contrary, we should be proud of the fact mm -hmm. that our government negotiated this and we will therefore be able to see it through. Mm -hmm. No, uh, you know, you brought up a, a good subject where the, the issues are different from party point of view. But uh, there are certain uncentral issues, as you mentioned, the land boundary, then the water and then the border killings, 
that is taking place. Uh, now, these are issues which uh, actually touch the lives of the people on of both sides. And these are issues which are sentimental, very high powered. And uh, over here, the government uh, of the day has been our milieu. And uh, when Congress was there, they thought that things would, again, uh, maybe a misinterpretation of things that when Congress is in power, uh, you know, the, a certain political party in our part enjoys their support. And when Congress is not in power, which is the case today, uh, it, it doesn't have the same sort of cooperation. And, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe you might <laughs> like to clarify that. No, you know, uh, Palmerston said in the 19th century, well, 170 years ago, that nations don't have permanent friends, they have permanent interests. And the truth is that any Indian government's principal duty and responsibility uh, are the interests of India, which means the security and well-being of the Indian people. True. Bangladesh is a very key ally in this, uh, in this regard because, let us be very honest, for many years there were Indian insurgent groups that were finding refuge on Bangladeshi soil. Uh, some of their terrorist activities in Indian territory appear to be facilitated out of Bangladesh. And when they came back to Bangladesh, they were allowed to live in peace. And this was a matter of great concern for India. With the current government uh, of the Awami League, and I don't even name the party, the current government of Bangladesh, right. um, <clears throat> we have found tremendous cooperation. Mm -hmm. And we have not only had some of these groups uh, finding their access choked off, but some have been arrested and even handed over to the Indian authorities. Yep. And uh, I mean, there are no bomb blasts in Assam today because of the way in which Bangladesh, mm -hmm. uh, the people of Bangladesh and the government of Bangladesh mm -hmm. have been cooperating. In turn, we in India believe that we should support the government of Bangladesh when it comes to the national interests of the people of Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. It is a win-win. It's a mutual matter. Mm -hmm. So from my point of view, the interest uh, is, is what determines the policy and not the party that is in power. If tomorrow the same attitude to, um, to uh, terrorist groups or insurgent groups was to be conducted by a different government, the government of India would welcome it in exactly the same way okay. that we are welcoming the cooperation of the present government. Okay. Well, I'll get back on this subject. Uh, we have to take another short break and I'll be back again. Viewers, we'll just take a short break and be back soon. Be with us.